Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. I almost said top 10 songs. Ranking the Albums today within the co in the co-captain's chair. It's Saturday morning. I'm having a hard time talking. Jamie Laszlo is in the house once again. Jamie, you look like you're in like a record. You look like you're in rock fantasy. I got, I see records. I see figures. I see video games. Where are you? This is my rock fantasy. Not capital letters, just my rock fantasy. It's my dining room. I, I, I turn my dining room into a bar because we eat, we don't dine, but we drink, so it's my bar. <laughs> <laughs> my wife would never let me put all that cool stuff in my dining room. That would never happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you are. So uh, so today we're going to tackle a, a very cool band, a more modern band. So uh, unless you've been kind of you know not paying attention for the last decade or so, uh, there's this very cool band out of Sweden who play a very... 70s inspired blues rock style they're called graveyard uh they they have actually you know gotten a lot of attention since they debuted and uh they broke up for a year or two got back together thankfully and they're continuing on so uh jamie and i are going to rank their studio albums there's only five of them so it's not going to be a terribly long show but really cool albums and uh i don't know for me not a week one in the bunch you know, I prefer oh. a couple over others, but I think uh, it's a very strong catalog. And I think if you've never listened to Graveyard, I don't know if you like bands from the 70s, like, you know, Grand Funk Railroad and Bad Company and Zeppelin, little bits of Sabbath. I mean, we can go on and on and name all sorts of bands, but uh, it's really cool, bluesy, slashing guitar riffs, great vocals. I mean, the singer is just amazing, uh, really cool songs. And they sound modern, right? I mean, they just, they don't... Yes. So, uh, so really cool stuff. So I'm going to have Jamie kick us off with his uh, number five pick. All right. First of all, I got my graveyard shirt on. I got it at one of their shows. I saw them with Earthless in a place about as big as my dining room. Wow. Ooh. Very cool. Man, I can't believe that place survived that show. <laughs> the place is trying to survive Corona right now. I can't believe it survived that one show. <laughs> so number like you said, not a weak bunch, not a weak album in the bunch, not even a weak song. I don't have any bad songs. Yeah. I was listening to these albums for the past week or so, and I'm like, why isn't this like one of my top five bands ever? <laughs> <laughs> I started liking them more. Did you ever do that before a show? Listen to a band to get ready for the show and go, I think I like them more than I even thought I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you just you immerse yourself in their music for a, a period of time. And then yes. you're like, wow, you know, it's like because I, I when I was doing getting ready for the show, I realized I haven't listened to Graveyard probably since that last album came out. And I listened to that yeah. a lot. But then, you know, you, you put it back on the shelf and then I haven't revisited them since. And I was like, oh, now I realize what I really love about this band. Right. It's, it's like, homework that doesn't suck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to come up with reasons why I rank them. But I'm going with the debut at number five, even though it's a wonderful album. It kicks ass. But I think, first of all, a lot of the bands that they kind of, you know, get lumped in with, you got Witchcraft, Baroness, uh, Mastodon, what else is out there? The Sword. All those bands, their first album is very raw. And then they kind of clean up their sound album to album until they go. They might lose fans as they do it, or they might gain fans as well as they do it. This band, their first album sounds pretty much like their last album. <laughs> you know, there's, that's not a bad thing. It, and I think if I gave this album to someone who never heard the band before, they wouldn't know it's their first album. But if I gave them all five, they'd probably be able to guess then which one's their first album. Say, yeah, it's probably yeah. this one. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Evil Ways kicks it off. Not the Santana cover, their song. Uh, they like to start their albums off with the heaviest, fuzziest song. It seems that way. Boom, they punch you. And then they kind of do a ballad and a bluesy thing next after that. Uh, Thin Line, great song, cool bass line. Lost in Confusion, really cool. Don't Take Us for Fools, this is pretty much where the graveyard magic starts to happen for me on this song. Um, it's, it's the best one on there. It's a head bobber. Blue Soul sounds like a uh, cream song. Reminds me of like something like a lost cream song. And I think the, uh, the bass player sings that song, I think. I can't pronounce these guys' names, Pete. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't try sometimes because, man, yeah, I, I didn't use... <laughs> last name, 
Mork with the two dots over the O. And <laughs> it'd be cool if Mork was married to a girl named Mindy, though. <laughs> uh, Submarine Blues is good. As the years pass by, the hours bend. I tell you what, another thing I noticed when I was listening to this band the last week or so, it's hard to remember the titles of the songs. Yeah, yeah. Because they're not like an ACDC. They don't say the title of the song 10,000 times within the song. And Satan's Finest uh, is really cool. They like to sing about Satan and the devil a lot, which adds this evilness to their to their bluesiness. They're just a kick-ass band, and that is my number five. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that one in a minute. But I, I think for me, there's... Um a little bit of a doomy edge to that album which maybe isn't quite as prevalent on some of the other ones um but we'll get to that in a minute so i'm gonna go with my number five i'm gonna go with 2015's innocence and decadence all right for me this i like this album a lot but i think this is this album is probably them at their most accessible sounding i think they definitely pulled a little back on some of the heavier elements and this album is more psychedelic uh, the, the guitars are janglier. That's less fuzz on this album, I think. Not that that's a bad thing. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who would much prefer this to some of their other stuff. Um, and it's definitely more of a blues album, I think. Uh, although all their albums are really bluesy. But there's some great stuff on here. I like the album a lot. Uh, Magnetic Shunk is a weird title, but a really yes. cool song. Lots of tasty licks. And man, his vocals are so good. Uh, Joaquin Nielsen, is that how he says his name? you're asking me Pete yeah, something like that anyway I always call him Nielsen because that you know the jo Joaquin my God, whatever he's a really cool singer and he's got this real raw raspy you know emotional vocal style it's just absolutely incredible he's definitely one of the most underrated singers we have today in this kind of style of music that nobody ever talks about you know people always talk about you know the old days you got your Steve Marriott's and your Glenn Hughes and all the Robert Plant and all those guys well this this should be one of those guys of today uh, and you just, you know, you don't hear it, but, uh, you know, just great band, great vocalist. Uh, what else we got? The, the drumming is great on that track. The apple in the tree is very sixties sounding. Uh, this album has a lot of those kind of like late sixties psychedelia, psychedelia meets pop vibes, throw a little blues in there. Uh, never there's to sell also kind of similar vibe on that. Uh, too much is not enough is a really cool kind of slow bluesy number, really memorable, uh, cause and effect hard-headed probably the heavier songs on the album uh which remind me more of the stuff from the early albums but you know to me when i look at these five albums to me this is easily the weakest for me but weakest is not weak uh it's just i think this is just the for me anyway the least successful of the five but i still really dig it a lot uh, so that just goes to say, you know, how strong this catalog is that you can say one album is the weakest, yet you still really dig it quite a bit. Uh, and the band, you know, would break up after this, uh, the album and tour, but they didn't go away for too long. And I remember how bummed most people were, myself included, when we heard that these guys broke up. We're like, what? It's like they, we, they just, they just showed up on the scene and I hear they are, they're yeah. done. It's like, but uh, thankfully they are back, but a really good album. And I will say for folks watching, uh, just because this is showing up on my number five does not mean it's a bad album at all. Uh, I think this is their most accessible, their most bluesy, uh, their easiest listening album, if that makes any sense. But these are all really good. So you would not be doing yourself a disfavor by starting off with this album if you are not have never heard the band before. Now, our number fives could be another band's number one. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. But I got the boys playing in the background there. There you go. <laughs> all right number four is their last album they've done peace uh, a lot of people are disappointed with this album i might have been disappointed when i first bought it but it, it kind of grew on me uh starts off with it ain't over yet of course hits you with that fuzzy hard song cold love it has a it has a cool guitar part uh during the chorus like a da, 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 da. I don't know. I'm tone deaf. Don't listen to it, people. You'll hear it. <laughs> I don't need to sing it for you. Uh, See the day. Uh, very moody. Please don't a straight ahead rocker. And then the very next song, uh, Del, Del Manic yeah. is another yeah. moody song. Mate, that's the only reason this comes in at number four. 
because two moody songs out of three tracks loses just a little bit of momentum for me on the album. That's it. That's a nitpick. <laughs> Other than that, it's great. Uh, Walk On. Oh, man. Walk On is a fun song. Let me tell you what I do, Pete, when I buy an album. First thing I do, because I listen to all my music at work, in the car, but the wife and I hang out in this room quite a bit Saturday nights and we listen to music. So when I buy an album, the first thing I do is I look for songs I can play when I'm hanging out with the wife. <laughs> I ain't pulling out Death's Stream Bloody Gore <laughs> on a Saturday night with the wife <laughs> or even not, Kind of Blue not. by Miles Davis. I got to make sure their wife approved before we put them into the playlist on a Saturday night. Walk on. So there's got to be at least one song to make it wife approved. Walk on makes this album wife approved. Certified. I actually got the wife approved stamp right there. Look at that. Take the album. Stamp it. <laughs> Bonafide. Wife approved. Look at that. <laughs> I, st I stole this from work and I just glued a paper W on there. But mentally, mentally, I do that in my mind. I stamp it as wife approved. And uh, coming in number four, but it could be another band's number one, of course. Yeah. Well, we're, we're together on this one because uh, Peace is also my number four. I, you know, when this came out, I was really excited. I dug it, listened to this a lot during uh, 2018. And I think, uh, you know, after the short breakup, this was a, you know, pretty solid kind of comeback for the band. They got a new drummer. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name uh, on this uh, album. Uh, you mentioned It Ain't Over Yet and Cold Love, which is a great kind of one-two punch to kick off this album. Uh, both real 70s inspired bluesy hard rock stuff. Uh, you know, again, we, we can name all the usual suspects like Blue Cheer and Mountain and Grand Funk and Free and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Please Don't is their big kind of like almost Black Sabbath-y song on the album. Uh, interestingly enough, and it's not like he always sounds like him, but I think, you know, you mentioned kind of the moody pieces that are on this album. Joaquin sounds a hell of a lot like Jim Morrison on a couple songs on this album, which is kind of weird, which gives those Never thought of that. songs kind of like a Doors feel to it, which I think is kind of neat. You know, yeah. Delmatic is another one, which kind of um, sounds a little bit like the Doors, which I, you know, I don't, I don't really mind too much. Uh, what else? The Sign of Peace is a their big, fast paced fuzzy rocker on this album. Uh, I think it's got a lot of variety to it. Uh, I love having them back again. And while it may not be the drop dead classic that a couple of the other ones are to me, I still think it's a really, really solid record. And uh, again, uh, their most two recent are fall falling at the bottom of my list, but they're both really excellent albums. So uh, a great place to start for anybody. Yeah, Bird of Paradise is another good song on there. Yeah, Some, that's sung by Mork. Yeah. They got to give Mork, uh, I don't even know if that's how you say his name, <laughs> but it seems like Mork is the uh, Keith Richards of Graveyard. You know how Keith Richards gets out one song, an album, they shoot Mork as one song just to <laughs> keep him happy like Keith Richards. <laughs> I need one song to make me happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, my number three is your number five, in a sense, in decadence. Every time I hear the word decadence, I think of Motley Crue because of that album, 10 years, a decade of decadence. Yeah. It's, they ruined that word. They're, they ruined a lot um, of things, man. <laughs> music in general, <laughs> heavy metal. <laughs> I like the first two albums. Um, Magnetic Shunk, like you said, good song. The Apple and the Tree was like the first... Uh, single single as they say now it was the video that they put on youtube first nothing's a single anymore yeah i know it's but they still use five way. on the billboard like, this is the chart. first song we're going to release from the album so here's here's your yeah. little preview to start things off so you to whet your appetite yeah there's there's no yeah. singles anymore that's all that's that, yeah, that they don't expect it to jump up above ed sheeran on the billboard charts or anything yeah exactly uh, exit 97 one of their moody songs again uh can't walk out Man, I tell you what, another great song. It's like their most mo Monster Magnet sounding song to me. And I love Monster Magnet. But this also reminds me, that I wish they made a video for this. Because it's the, do you remember back in the early 70s, late 60s, they had variety shows. And I, like a hard rock band would play. And it's all black and white. And they're playing. And then, they, and then maybe they put a filter over the 
camera lens and there's swirls. And then during the performance, they would do like if Black Sabbath was playing, I think they, it happens on Paranoid, uh, they would put up the band names over the band. <laughs> lead vocals, Ozzy Osbourne, and you'd see in the background. Yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I think a band with a retro sound like these guys should make a video kind of like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. It would be really yeah, cool. Totally make it black and white. Yep. This song would work perfectly for that. I yeah, think. I could totally see that. If Graveyard, you call me. We'll talk. <laughs> um, too much, not enough. Sounds like a Black Crows song to me, that one. Could be. Cause and defect, great groove. You know what? They also incorporate a little R&B from time to time into the music. They do, yeah, they do. Cause and defect, I'm already singing the chorus in my mind. <laughs> great song. Stay for a song. It, it's a nice way just to close it out. And the hatch is not on my vinyl, but it is on my CD as a bonus song. Multiple things. So, right. Track yes, number well. three. Yeah. All right, number three. I'm gonna go with uh, the debut from 2007. So this was their, uh, you know, debut for Transubstans Records, who were from the Swedish label. Great label, by the way. If anybody loves this type of stuff, like the 70s inspired uh, blues rock and heavy rock bands, go to Transubstans and check out their roster of artists. Great little plug there for my buddies over at that record label uh but here released on tp records and you know i think i agree with everything jamie said before um doesn't sound a hell of a lot different than the rest of the albums i do think there's a little bit more of the doom vibe on this album not a lot but just enough um it's really moody and brooding you know the whole album is just steeped in atmosphere and just i i thought when this album came out it was pretty damn refreshing to hear something like this um and Nielsen's raw bluesy vocals are just absolutely outstanding here. I think Jamie mentioned Evil Ways, great song, screaming guitar solos, just totally dig that. Blue soul, really kind of almost like grim psychedelic blues, you know, really, really just great vibe on this whole album. You got Thin Line, good hard rocker. <clears throat> Don't take us for fools. Uh, I get like a little early Jethro Tell feel on that, like maybe the first two albums. All right. Um, and then as the song kind of picks up the pace, you get that little grand funk feel, which they have a lot of that grand funk thing going on in their music. And then you mentioned Satan's Finest, which, uh, you know, when I, I listened to that song the other day, and I, again, I haven't heard this album in a while. I was like, man, that's like, you know, the first Sabbath album meets like Wishbone Ash. Cause it's got these kind of cool, like, you know, really lyrical guitar solos. And it has that kind of like epic feel like those first couple of Wishbone Ash albums. I don't know. I, I just think it's a really cool album. And uh, it, it was really good to kind of go and revisit this for the first time in maybe a couple of years. Cause I don't think I've listened to this in a while and uh, just kind of took me back to when this album first came out and uh, yeah, just great album, great band. And uh, all these albums are really cool. Yeah. It's weird to talk about a band that I haven't listened to for 35 years. You know, in my mind, they're still new. I don't have a long history with them. Where I discovered them is in this room. And here I am in this room talking about them with you now. Yep. Um, number two, this thing in blues. Uh, great, it almost was my number one. I, I took a walk this morning listening to it and I, I almost made a quick change, but I'm gonna keep it at my two. Um, first song, Starts off with the banger. The vocals in that song almost reach the point of total distortion and then come back. Great. Uh, no good Mr. Holden. Starts off with backwards singing. Who does that nowadays <laughs> over this moody guitar thing? I wish if I had it on vinyl, I'd play it backwards on my turntable. <laughs> I wonder what he's saying. I'm gonna try to Google that. But you know what, they do that, um, this song, they do that uh, thing that Zeppelin used to do where the, the verses are soft and then the chorus is hard. Yeah. Um, the Pixies and Nirvana used to do that too. Am I going to get a citation in the mail for mentioning Nirvana on Sea of Tranquility? <laughs> Am I going to get a fine? There's, there, no, unless you get it from me directly. There's, there's, there's plenty of Nirvana fans out there. I know, I know. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> I know. Uh, the, uh, the title cut, great, mentions Lucifer. <laughs> Uncomfortably numb, 
I don't know if that's a take on the Pink Floyd song or not, but how can it not be? One thing they do have in common is they have a kick-ass guitar solo at the end. Yeah, I think that's about the only thing in common they have. Yes, Buying Truth, got that R&B, ooh, ooh, backing vocals in the thing that kind of keeps you going. Maybe this is my number one. I don't know. <laughs> Longing, uh, Spaghetti Western. Longing sounds like a Spaghetti Western, like, yeah, like there's yeah. a showdown at noon, big gunfight. Yep. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind having a showdown at noon with some of my neighbors, Pete. <laughs> if we if we ever do it in the middle of the street, that song will be playing out the window. <laughs> I'd get my ass shot in a second. Uh, the Siren. That's the first. This was my introduction to them. And that was the first song that really grabbed me. This was the song I was playing for friends. I'm like, you got to hear this one. It is a banger. Um, and he, he yells, when he yells, tonight a demon came into my head. Holy crap. Yeah, you believe him. You just want to say, dude, Max von Sadow is coming. He's bringing Father Karras. Hold on for 15 minutes. Hold on. <laughs> we'll get that demon out. But yeah, this, this could easily be my number one, but I'm putting it, I'm sticking it at number two. Well, you know, I had the same problem you did, I think, with my number one and two. Um, ultimately, though, I went with uh, Lights Out as my number two from uh, 2012. I, well, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, to me, you know, I mentioned before The Doors, right? And I think uh, on this album, they're even like a darker, more guitar heavy The Doors. Uh, there's just this kind of like aura of like, mystical spookiness about this band that I really dig, which I always loved about The Doors. And maybe it's just because they're harnessing a sound from a certain era. Maybe it's because uh, Joaquin Nielsen sounds a little like Morrison at times. I don't know, because, you know, they don't really sound like The Doors, but I get elements of The Doors that for me is, is very appealing. Uh, you got an industry of murder, kicks off the album. Again, we're talking about how they love to just kind of go for the jugular the first song on every album and i love bands that do that you gotta gotta grab the listener right and um it's just like this twisted heavy psychedelic blues rock track really really good uh riffs and the drums are really frantic just pulls you right in and i think his vocals are just absolutely i love using this term dripping with venom and he's got this really like kind of run i'm sitting there watching the uh, the concert behind you which i actually was watching on <laughs> you YouTube. want me to turn it up <laughs> <No>. <laughs> then we'll get we'll get in trouble with the, uh, youtube i know i know <laughs> but i was watching that the other day and he he just pours everything into a performance it's like he reminds me of like you know lemmy when he was younger lemmy had that microphone that kind of came up and down and he would just like be all in it and just you look the, the passion on his face and everything like that i mean he's just totally into the performance and you get that from a lot of the songs on this album uh you got the um slow motion countdown another great vocal track really atmospheric uh seven seven is a real bluesy headbanger as is the suits the law and the universe again all these weird long titles right you know yeah uh, endless night catchy song but really heavy uh hard times loving that's another one of those kind of doomy tracks which they would do every so often uh then you got the the massive goliath which is just a uh fantastic track reminds me of like 70s pentagram which i'm pretty sure graveyard was was a fan of of pentagram uh, i don't know how they couldn't have been but uh you know just tasty lead guitars throughout this album um really strong 2020 Tunnel Vision is another really great track. It's, I love the brooding nature of a lot of the songs on this album. And uh, I think it's a great album, which, you know, for most people might even be their number one. I wouldn't argue it at all. For me, their number one and their two are just really, really special albums. So yes. I'll, I'll let you talk about it now. <laughs> well, first thing I'm going to say is uh, it's the suits, the law, and the uniforms. See, wacky titles. You said universe. <laughs> Oh, did I? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get it all right with these wacky names. Um, yeah, what, what did I I'll say? I'll start with that song, even <laughs> though it's not the first track. Uh, that is a, uh, it's a banger. It's a, it's a rock and roll song for party people, people who like to party, I think. And look around me, Pete. I like to party. 
I'd open a beer right now, but I have a strict rule in this house, Pete. No drinking before 10 a.m. No drinking before 10 a.m. All right. Well, you're almost you're almost there. All right. I'm kidding, anyways. You could drink here before 10 a.m. I don't care. Um, but the first song, of course, well, it's not a banger. It's a slow builder for a change. It's like, here we go. And it's anticipation. You're so used to that. <laughs> okay, something different. I love this album when it first came out. I listened to it nonstop. That's what made it number one for me over number two. Just how much, I think I like the songs on here. Some people like heaviness. Some people like how well you play guitar. I'm a song guy. And I like the songs on here better, I think. Uh, slow motion countdown you mentioned. I think that could benefit with playing it with a live orchestra. I think it would really work. There's a, there's a, like a string sound towards the end, but it's probably keyboards. These guys can't afford strings, guys to come in. Endless Nights. Uh, let's not forget how good the drummer is in this band. Yeah, he is. He <laughs> is. on his song. Yeah. Hard times, hard times loving. Uh, there's a part on there, but we're gonna get through these hard times. And what he's singing about is how he effed up a relationship with a girl and he's hoping to get through these hard times. But in 2020, when I hear that line, I think about 2020 and us trying to get through these hard times. So once a song is out there for the listener, the listener can do whatever he wants with the song. That's Change right. the yeah. idea and the idea of the lyrics. Goliath. Fool in the end, great. 2020 tunnel vision. You know what? This only comes in at 35 minutes. It's a very short album. They they jam, but they're short song. They're a jam band for people who don't like jam bands. Is basically what they are. Yeah, I yeah, you know, I can totally see that. Um you, you, you mentioned the feeling that they would love to go off into those long instrumental excursions, but they don't do it. Yeah. Very tight. Um, I think if this album came out in the 90s, because in a parallel universe, I think they're rock stars somewhere. But if this came out in the 90s, I think the grunge scene crowd would have gobbled this up. I think they would have had a better career. You know, maybe yeah, not yeah. Pearl Jam level, but maybe a Seven Mary Three level. Yeah, I, you know, I can kind of see, you know, these guys as well as maybe Cadaver as well. Uh, have that kind of appeal that I think the grunge scene would have embraced a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Maybe we can do Cadaver one day. Uh, well, you've got to wait for the new album to come out first. Yeah. Oh, there is. A new <laughs> I've one actually had them on my list for months, but I, their their new album is supposed to come out sometime this month. So it's been. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. yeah Already a year. Yeah. Yeah. They. Um. It's been delayed. I think due to COVID stuff oh, okay and what have you but uh it was originally supposed to come out a couple months ago but i think it's scheduled for right before christmas or something like that i don't know i, I now i'm excited I keep telling now you got me excited like, you gotta get it in for me buddy and i gotta say is as kind of simple as it is i love this album cover i don't know why yeah maybe because it reminds me of like an old tangerine dream album cover so it's just got that 70s feel to it it's just like here you there's go. a darkness there's a darkness and evilness to it, kind of. Too. There is. It's like, and you wind up looking at, at the black part of the album cover and you're like, all right, I know there's something. What's there. in there? <laughs> is that like trees? Is it a forest? Is it just like, because you see this. Like, is it a face? I, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I always look at it and I'm like, I know there's something there. I don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, I know. But uh, it's. Maybe just, it's like one of those things at the mall you got to stare at for 10 minutes and then the picture comes. Yeah, you stare at it till you get sick, right? And you're like, yeah. I'm not seeing anything but this like nebulous white amoeba thing there in this sea of black i don't know but it's just i just think it's cool anyway um all right so my number one obviously no surprise here is uh, his singing blues from 2011 uh you know the more that i listen to these two is <laughs> and dated <laughs> from thursday i was gonna get notified or notarized at work but they wouldn't do that at work uh, Obviously, they take their notarizing very serious. They won't do it for a gag. Did you have an alternate just in case? No, because I knew I didn't need it. <laughs> wow, that's a good prediction. Uh, that's a good prediction. This this reminds me of like, um, geez, what was it? 
back do you remember when i was doing the, the classic live album war thing like a year or so ago there were people who like every day were like you know placing bets and predicting which ones i would pick and i think the same yeah. thing we're doing the favorite album by year thing it's just amazing so uh yeah that's pretty cool well you guessed it uh but again i it was kind of a hard time i was going back and forth between this and lights out but i think when the more i listened to it the more i was like yeah you know what i mean this is this is a sophomore album that really, really just works on so many levels. You can kind of tell, again, it sounds like the same band, but you can kind of tell that their songwriting has matured a bit from the, from the debut. The music's more accessible, I think. Uh, again, you know, you talked about a lot, that bluesy late 60s, early 70s vibe that's throughout this entire album, really throughout their music in general. Uh, Ain't Fit to Live Here, Scorching, psychedelic blues track. I urge anybody to just go out and check that out again. Another kickoff track to a great album uh vocally he's just on fire throughout this entire album um the guitars uh, i'm gonna attempt to to bastardize his name so the other guitar player laroca ram i don't know how many letters have dots over him on in his i don't know i didn't put it in my notes so i don't know who <laughs> the hell knows but i should yeah, if i went back to look it up there's probably a few of them um you got uh no good mr holden i love that song just gut-wrenching you know lots of groove bluesy feel to it just absolutely love that song the drumming i think you you picked up on off the charts uh i uncomfortably know is a great song and not only does it have a great guitar so i think i love the kind of slow build to the song it's got a lot of emotion uh buying truth it's got these tremendous bass riffs i mean also the bass player in this band and i forget his name you can hear him all the time he's i, I love bands where you can actually hear the bass player and uh, nope. and what is he what is what's he playing is he playing like a rickenbacker is he playing a fender jazz i don't i don't even remember oh that's for you technical nerds i don't know that <laughs> they, i mean a lot of these bands they use like the vintage instruments so you have like you know like these guys do you get that sound like gibson sg or you know the real kind of vintage equipment which i i love and it comes across in their music um what else we got here how about the song longing which to me sounds like a lost track from the old Peter Green Fleetwood Mac days. And that I think is one of the coolest things about this band is they can kind of harness that late sixties, early seventies British blues thing, you know, like uh, Fleetwood Mac and Savoy Brown and Chicken Shack and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, really, really cool. Um, the big doom track for me on this album is Ungrateful of the Dead, which I think is, you know, love that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the siren, which also has a lot of those late 60s psychedelic elements. I just think this is a pretty incredible album. And, you know, this is the album. I mean, this is on Nuclear Blast Records. That's a big deal. Uh, this is really the album that got people talking about, oh, Graveyard, who is this Graveyard band? And it's just, it's a real shame that like all the uh, talk of the band when this album came out hasn't really, it's just kind of leveled, right? I mean, the band hasn't really hasn't done snowballed. Bigger. Yeah. And it's like, I just, I was, I was really expecting these guys to be really big. And while, you know, most folks who listen to metal or hard rock know who they are. Um, I just think there's a lot in their music and their albums that would appeal to a more mainstream audience without them even doing anything different than what they're doing. Uh, so again, you know, what is, what is that down to? Is that just down to the way people listen to music nowadays or the type of music people listen to? I don't know. It's, this I'll is tell you, Pete. They're too bluesy, too heavy for the younger crowd, a lot of the younger crowd. And older rock fans are too busy or too lazy to go find them. Yeah. And that's yeah, the problem. That's I'm, I'm talking about America. I don't know. Maybe in Sweden, maybe they play to bigger crowds. I don't know. Yeah. Sweden, they, they suck when it comes to COVID, but they spit out the rock bands, man, the last 20 years. A lot of good ones. Yeah. I, I think yeah. you're absolutely right. I think like the, the older rock fans who would eat this stuff up just are unwilling to listen to anything new past like 1989. And I've said that before. Right. And that's, that's so true. And, you know, there are people who want to argue with me on there, but then, you know, they talk about all they want to talk about are the albums from the late seventies and the eighties. And they, you know, they're, yeah. and, I, and I get it, you know, people grow up, you have you get jobs and families and all that kind of stuff. And you don't maybe have the time to go and seek out new music, but man, they only got five albums. Is it going to hurt you to go online and listen to a couple of them? And look, Pete, you have a lot of your, listeners and, and viewers are older people yeah. they spent 45 minutes listening to us they don't have five more minutes to google graveyard and listen to a song or two uh i call bullshit 
<laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard, right? You know, all no! you gotta do is, all you gotta do is being lazy. Up. Yeah, it's and that's what it is, right? It's like um yeah. So uh I, I definitely like I said, I, I hate to constantly bring up older bands, but if you grew up listening and loving, you know, Bad Company, Grand Funk Railroad, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Free, um Green. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Blue Cheer. I mean, you go on and on here. Cactus. Man, there's so much to love in this band. You know, if you like yeah. the gym, the Doors, you know, the more rock and Doors stuff, if you love Jim Morrison's vocal style. I mean, it's... if you don't like the fuzziness, there's not fuzziness on every song. No, there And every is. song that has fuzzy, fuzziness, there's a clean guitar solo underneath it, too, to yeah. balance it out. Yeah. I think most of their, their stuff doesn't rely on fuzz so like in other words uh you know you can kind of compare them to rival sons an american yeah. band who i think use fuzz more than these guys do actually but similar kind of vibe throughout there but you know these guys sound more scandinavian they're definitely more uh brooding yes. and moody right whereas opposed to i think uh, rival sons a little more upbeat um but both great bands both really great bands so all we can do right. Jay, is do shows like this to hope that people will go out and open up yeah. their minds and open up their ears a little bit and hopefully this video gets more than what a dozen views graveyard i never heard of them yeah what else is pete going to talk about today <laughs> <laughs> that, you know the, the the popular thing is graveyard never heard of them when are you going to do a show on hanoi rocks That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm like do they rock though do they <laughs> uh, not for me they don't but whatever so anyway there you have it everybody uh are ranking the albums of a very cool Swedish band Graveyard. So if you are a fan, rank these five albums in the order of your preference. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. And please, if you've never heard Graveyard before and love bluesy, hard rock music, please do yourself a favor. You'd make us very happy. Go out and listen to some of this stuff. Yeah. All right. I got on my knees for you people. See that? We're, we're Jamie and I are both very passionate about this band. This is a band that should be huge. So please just take some time, take 15 minutes and go listen to two or three songs, see what you think. Um, hopefully you like what you hear. So uh, Jamie, any last parting words here? Uh, no, I didn't dress up like Great Yard today. <laughs> if I did, I would have had a magically grow hair and then not wash it for about two weeks. <laughs> I didn't have that kind of time, Pete. <laughs> You can always tell uh, when, you, especially if you watch a lot of the live stuff from these guys on YouTube, it's like they, they probably go from gig to gig and they don't really shower, but that's all right. right. It kind of adds to the whole. <laughs> <laughs> Their music doesn't stink, but the band members do. Yeah, probably, probably. So uh, there you have it, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.catranquilly.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube. All the damn time, Pete. That's right. That's right. So we'll see everybody real soon. Actually coming right up. Uh, Martin Popoff and Rich Katina are coming on the show. We're going to talk some early 80s U.S. metal and uh, we'll hopefully see Jamie back real soon. So uh, have a good rest of the weekend, everybody. For Jamie Laszlo, I am Pete Pardo. Take care, everybody.